In this video, I want to talk about Treyarch's next Call of Duty Zombies game and the little rumblings that we've been getting every now and again from developers over on Twitter, as they've been giving us various different teasers, essentially saying that they have very big plans. But obviously, that is very ambiguous and is not enough to get anyone on board after the recent Vanguard Zombies has disappointed a lot of fans. And because they are so disappointed, it's hard for them to just jump straight back into the hype train again with the next game. Kevin Drew has been promoted to director though previously I believe he was the systems lead for Cold War Zombies and I think this is really good news for fans. I think Cold War Zombies was a phenomenal game and I think that was largely in part due to a lot of the new systems in place and the overhaul to the gameplay. Kevin did also talk about on Twitter how he basically came from humble beginnings and it was really hard for him to get into track in the first place so when he managed to finally land that big position he has worked very very hard over the years and you have to bear in mind he's been working on Call of Duty Zombies for a very long time. When people talk about Cold War Zombies and even Black Ops 4 Zombies and they talk about Treyarch losing touch and the fact that a lot of developers have left, that isn't necessarily true. Yes, big names like Jason Blundell have left the company, but a lot of people who have been working on Call of Duty Zombies or other things in Call of Duty for a while are still at Treyarch. There are new developers too of course, but there are still a lot of OGs and Kevin Drew did work on maps like like Mob of the Dead, I believe, which is beloved by almost all of the community as one of the fan favourites. Trek have also talked about on Twitter how it seems like they are planning to have harder easter eggs in their next game, because whilst Cold War Zombies has been a big success, I think it's improved the overall health of the community and drastically increased the player base because it's brought a lot of players over from Warzone and that's why a lot of the mechanics are designed sort of similar to Warzone with the fact that you have weapon tiers and you can pick up salvage and pick up weapons off the floor etc. But with Cold War Zombies they stripped back the easter eggs to make them flow a lot better but they were a lot more easily accessible so that it was open to a lot of new Call of Duty Zombies fans and new players could jump into the franchise because I think ever since Black Ops 3 the Zombies community has been dwindling especially with Black Ops 4 Zombies so because they were losing players what they had to do was bring in new players and that's what they tried to achieve with Cold War Zombies and I think by making the easter eggs more streamlined and easier to access it did do that. It helped a much higher percentage of the community complete them and enjoy them. At the same time though it caused a lot of the Call of Duty Zombies fans who have been here for a very long time who enjoyed the very convoluted and complex easter egg steps and the long easter egg hunts. It led them to feel disenfranchised and I honestly think that people are a bit misguided because Call of Duty Zombies is a mode in which the zombie dies out at the end of the round so it doesn't really make sense to have these really complex easter egg puzzles where you need to bring up external data like charts on websites just to be able to complete the easter eggs. That shouldn't have to be a thing in game especially when there's no way to just have no zombie attacking you or it dies out. Especially on solo. It makes it very difficult to complete the quest in game and it means that hunting for the easter eggs is basically artificially extended due to this reason, if people could actually properly hunt for them without the zombies dying out etc, it would make more sense, but I just don't think it's really fitted for this mode. But it seems like Treyarch are essentially saying that they might be doing harder easter eggs in the next game in the form of side easter eggs, so they might have a lot more side easter eggs that are a lot more complicated and convoluted that have puzzles to solve like the old easter eggs. We have more information to talk about, but before I get into all of it, I just have a quick sponsored message for you to listen to. The Bit vs is a meta universe composed by several different games that revolve around the unique characters that dwell in it, the Bit Heroes. Players can customise the level up and interact with the heroes in a myriad of ways. The game is available on iOS, Android and web browsers. Play and enjoy different games in Bitverse such as Bit Heroes RPG Quest, Bit Heroes Arena, Bit Heroes Runner and other titles that are still yet to release. There's a place for everyone. Bit Heroes, the centrepiece of the Bitverse, are exclusive characters with unique traits and perks that will enable players to use them across all the different games. All players will be able to customise their characters to play within the Bitverse. You can join their Discord channel to get updates on the games as they develop and news about upcoming events. If this sounds interesting to you, check out the games via the link in the description, join the Discord channel and be a part of the community and get all the latest updates.
you have to understand that the main easter eggs on the maps, they're not even really easter eggs and they haven't been that way for a while. Treyarch have been referring to them as quests for quite some time and that is what they are. They are not secrets, they are not easter eggs, they are not really even something you need to hunt because all of the steps are pretty much led as you just play the game. It walks you through them. The easter eggs are story quests, it's essentially like a mini campaign and that was another reason why Treyarch stripped back the easter eggs and made them more easily accessible because it also allows more fans to jump into the storyline without having to look up videos on YouTube if they couldn't complete them in-game themselves and it's the same with what they did with the intel system in Cold War Zombies which at the same time I do think that is a bit too convoluted just because there is so much and it's very hard for casual fans to collect them all and be interested enough to do so. If Treyarch are planning to have harder side easter eggs in the next game though I do think they need to have worthwhile rewards and maybe even some permanent upgrades where you just do the quest once and then you get a permanent upgrade in all future games because that way if there is some weird convoluted puzzle it doesn't really matter that's not really suited for a zombies mode in which the zombie dies off at the end of the round because if it is a permanent upgrade once you've done it it doesn't really matter you can just keep on playing as opposed to having to redo that same convoluted thing every time you play the map making it become extremely repetitive and tedious and that's a big reason why I don't feel like going back to a lot of the old Call of Duty zombies maps because I'm going to have to do a lot of convoluted things that I haven't done in goddamn forever and I'll have to pull up a bunch of YouTube tutorials just to be able to get through it whereas I know on any map in Cold War Zombies no matter how much time has passed I can jump back on those maps and I don't need to look up YouTube tutorials I can get through things pretty easily and Kevin Drew has been hinting that it does seem like they are probably going to be planning for a proper super easter egg in the next game for completing all of the quests on the maps since he replied to Lee Ross who worked on Infinite Warfare Zombies which had by far the best super easter egg that hopefully they can meet that expectation in their next game since the Cold War Zombies super easter egg isn't really a proper super easter egg it's just a little reward for completing the quest and is a bit of a swan song it's just a thank you from the developers to the community as opposed to it being some sort of complicated quest or massive reward to obtain hopefully they build the next game with a super easter egg quest in mind which I don't think happened with Cold War Zombies I think this was a bit of an afterthought once they got deep into development and at least some of the maps had already released. It was just a bit of a bonus in its year two. In regards to Treyarch's next Call of Duty Zombies game though, we know that it's probably going to release in 2024 as leaks and rumours suggest the game has been delayed from 2023 and David Vonderhaar replied to a very interesting tweet from Treyarch in which they said they are working on future Call of Duty projects. But what are those future projects? Because Vonderhaar replied to it saying they are working on classified, classified and even more classified. Well I'm guessing one of the classified things is their next game. The other thing is probably the rumoured free-to-play game which is apparently going to be releasing in 2023 with some sort of weird building mechanic. We don't really know much about the game but apparently Trek are not the only developer working on it, Sledgehammer Games and other studios are working on it too and that's going to help fill the gap because Trek's next game has been delayed. What is the third project they're working on though? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe a remastered game? Since according to the leaker Ralph's Valve, Activision are apparently considering it now because Activision are merging with Microsoft and Call of Duty games are probably going to go on the Xbox Game Pass so it would make sense to now start remastering old Call of Duty games for the Game Pass and Microsoft are apparently also allowing for more creativity and a wider variety of games. Previously Activision didn't really like doing remasters because when they tried to remaster COD 4 with Infinite Warfare apparently that was a big disaster behind the scenes for Activision in planning out how they push out content for that game with it being a remaster there's fans who want nothing changed there's fans who want new content and how do they bring content to that game whilst also bringing content to the main IP that year and also Warzone. Well now that Call of Duties are not going to be releasing every single year it opens up the gap where they can release remasters in between main releases to help increase sales etc and also Activision don't have to try to pressure slight increases in their stock price anymore because that's what they've been doing recently but as soon as they merge with Microsoft it's just going to merge with Microsoft stock and it's going to be more dependent on that and they don't have to push for those short-term gains as much anymore as they won't be as demanded by shareholders and investors. But yeah, I don't know what this other Vonderhaar thing he is referring to though. What are these classified things? It's just very ambiguous right now when we probably won't find out for a very long time. I am really looking forward to COD 2024 Zombies though in terms of the storyline. Of course, we now know that Eddie Richtofen was the grandmaster behind pretty much all of Cold War Zombies, putting all of the puzzle pieces 
is in play and he's probably going to be the main antagonist in the next game and he's been working with a super uber rich group of investors on something called Project Janus which probably has something to do with a portal to the Dark Ether. We know he also apparently has a son called Samuel that went into the Dark Ether and had a wife. They apparently were both killed but Samuel ended up in the Dark Ether. His bunny is apparently Mr. Peaks who has now become the symbol of the mystery box and he might be trying to rescue Samuel from the Dark Ether. We also know that Dr. Peck has gone over to the Pacific to a Japanese boating town in which he is going to be trying to venture out into the ocean. Maybe that could be the location of where the Operation Inversion Dark Ether missiles struck the ocean that Samantha Max is sent there. Of course the strike team have been locked away but they'll be returning. We also know that Samantha Max has ended up in the Dark Ether. She's probably going to further corrupt and get more powers whilst in there because time works differently in the Dark Ether and that's going to be a very very long time in Dark Ether years. And of course Strauss, Weaver, Grey etc have been locked up in a secret facility known as Black Side 13. And Eddie Richtofen was involved with digging secret underground tunnels in rural West Virginia and hiring a bunch of scientists, military personnel, operations personnel and custodians and they used a cover story of a nuclear power plant failing and leaking to evacuate the locals. What exactly is he up to there? It's definitely something to do with Project Janus. It could be the location of where they're building a large dimensional breach to the Dark Ether if they are planning to go in there. And also we know that the old ones are likely going to be returning. After Zykov was captured in the containment chamber, it seems to have freed them, as informed by the zealot Spragmos. Something I want to talk about though is what Kevin Drew has been talking about on Twitter because the community gives the developers a ton of flack, but we don't really understand what goes on behind the scenes and how hard the developers work. And something that Kevin has been talking about is that maps take months and months to make, a good few months. They are not something that can just be pumped out quickly. They can't release a new round based map every single week like I'm sure many of us would want. These maps take a ton of time and I'm sure the majority of the time isn't even developing the map. The majority of development time probably goes into the prep work where they do the concepts for the map, they plan out the storyline, they plan out how they're going to do the post launch content for the game, they figure out the backstory, the research, etc. All of that probably goes into play before they even start developing the map itself. All of that prep work involves, you know, getting the systems working, etc. But actually making the maps themselves probably just takes a few months and that's why they can't just be pumping out new maps literally non-stop like I'm sure many of us would want. And it does seem like Trek have been held back with developer constraints. Kevin did briefly allude to why Vanguard Zombies essentially failed in many eyes of the community and he was basically saying that the developers always want the best, obviously. They're not trying to be lazy, they're not trying to take shortcuts. Often there's budget cuts or issues with not enough developers even working on a project, which I think is in the case of Vanguard Zombies, or they would just rush to make something in a short period of time. And all of these constraints come from higher ups at either Treyarch or Activision and stuff is just sometimes out of their control. They want to make the best possible thing, but at the end of the day, they are limited because they are controlled by a higher power, that being Activision, and that's where the money comes from. They are at the behest of them and their demands and whatever they want to do to please shareholders. And I think that's what we've seen with Vanguard Zombies. But now that Trek's next game has been delayed by a year, it's going to give them a lot of extra time. And now that the Microsoft merger is happening with Activision, a lot of Trek developers are apparently feeling relieved because they are going to get that extra time. So I think with this next game, it's going to be crammed with content. Of course, don't get your expectations too high. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. Just don't be too hard on the developers though, because these people want the best for the games. They are still really passionate. And even if you dislike certain things about the game or even pretty much everything about the games, they are doing the best with what they work with. And their jobs are difficult because they are trying to please so many different facets of the community, so many different types of people and players. And of course, we all have different opinions, different likes, needs, etc., different schedules, different jobs, and that dictates how we enjoy these experiences and the types of players we are. But that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below as always. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.